hope you all are having a wonderful day. My name is Yupari and I'd like to invite you into this quick little uh, charcoal drawing demonstration. And this technique that I'm going to use is actually uh, the way that I practice uh, creating portrait paintings and practice creating uh, portrait drawings. All right, so this is our model, Christine. And I'm gonna keep an image of her too the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it throughout the entire drawing video. So I have my paper pre-toned with um, just the shavings that I got from basically sharpening my charcoal. So this is just sandpaper and this is a uh, neutrium uh, charcoal and if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using as far as the paper, the charcoal, and all of the other materials, uh, just go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and you'll have all of that typed up for you. So let's just have some practice today. I thought I would just uh, show you kind of one of my practice routines that I have um, before I film a painting video or uh, just when I just wanna practice or get an idea for a more finished uh, work. So. Basically, what I'm going to do is uh, called a wipeout drawing. So that means I'm going to subtract the lights with um, a cloth and an eraser and some paper towel. And um, this is pretty cheap paper. So in the description box below, I'll write down my preferred paper. This certainly isn't it. Um, this is just for practice. So let's go ahead. So this is the outside shape. Here we have the top of the head. So the top of the head is right about here. The bottom is here. And these are rough estimates. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is put the dark masses of the hair in pretty early because this is gonna be a very quick and um, kind of a gestural approach to portrait drawing. And I'm sorry, the paper is kind of bouncing around. Again, this is pretty much how I practice. So here's a little angle here. Just simple approximations for the darks. So let's put that dark shape in there. So the top of the hairline might fit around there, not entirely sure. Let's just mass all of this dark in. Just unify all of the dark. Just simple shapes of light and dark. Just trying to cover the entire thing. This is one of the beautiful things about charcoal, is that you can do this. You can very quickly just go in and cover large masses like this. And you can really study value very easily with this technique. It's one of my favorite approaches to uh, drawing. This is a very painterly uh, way of approaching things. Not too worried about the drawing there. We'll get there, don't worry. Just covering in these large masses of dark. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go and get a stump. So the stump is going to help me push the charcoal into the fabric of the paper. And again, just covering the masses. Cover the masses. That's all I'm doing. Now this is a simplistic um, rectangular shape that I'll eventually uh, subtract into and say, suppose that the eyebrow would go here. Um, I'll come back in and subtract. So let's go ahead and show you how I do that and what I mean by subtraction. So this is a uh, chamois cloth Notice how I can pick up quite a bit of charcoal with it. So let's go ahead and just pick up the charcoal. Very quick and simple. Just subtracting a little bit here. And so another thing I'll do is a piece of, I'll take a piece of paper towel that has a little bit of charcoal already on it. And notice how it kind of doesn't subtract as much. So this subtracts, but it subtracts less. So it allows me to get an even 
um, darker value in the lights. Again, this is a very quick and easy approach to drawing. So let's use it to just carve this outside shape, make it even more specific. Cuts into about there. Now then I'm gonna go ahead and reassess this dark shape. Notice I'm gonna be going back and forth between my materials. So that is, I'm going back and forth between the stump and the charcoal right now. So let's suppose maybe we're gonna fit an eye in there. So let's get the paper towel and subtract a little bit. And an eye will probably fit there. Now let's go ahead and subtract a little bit down here. And again, this is just for this is just for practice. This is how I practice. Now here we have a little line here. Now for a smaller light, so suppose uh, this little bit of light here for the sclera of the eye. That is the white of the eye. I just roll the paper towel into a little point and subtract. And I don't want to subtract too much, but just enough. And I want to give myself room to be wrong. So if anything needs to be moved, I can move it. But again, just going at it by shape, just looking at the shape. All right, so I see that I'm kind of getting ahead of myself with that eye. I don't really want too much detail. So let's go ahead and just look at the structure of the head before we get too caught up in the features. So let's just subtract a little shape here for the muzzle of the mouth. So that is the orbicularis oris, the structure here. And we'll subtract a little bit up there. Notice how very quickly we can create an image with the charcoal in this fashion. So we're subtracting a little bit more here. And so this was a, so what I did was I subtracted a little bit here with the paper towel and I'm coming back in with the chamois. So remember the paper towel doesn't subtract as much as the chamois. All right, so let's subtract even lighter there. Lighter plane here. This shape goes down a little bit more. Notice I'm constantly going back and forth between my shapes, and I'm just trying to look at the structure of the head. This is a very painterly uh, approach to drawing. And that shape goes down there a little bit more. And uh, let's go ahead and just subtract that. And we'll go back in with the charcoal. Place in that dark accent. Again, I don't really want too much detail. So I'm staying, staying cautious of uh, the detail. I don't want to put too much in. Just a simple shape is enough for me. And again, just a simple little shape there for the eye. Notice how it's just a simple little line there. And this cuts in a little bit like that. Very simple. It's a very expressive way to draw as well. It's a lot of fun. So again, paper towel. It subtracts a little bit less than the chamois. And what's more, when you want to get even lighter, you need an eraser. See that? Subtract even more. So we're just looking at the large structure of the portrait, not getting caught up with eyelashes or eyebrows or any kind of minutia. We're just looking at this simple shape. Now that mandible goes down a little bit more. Notice even how the mouth, the mouth, it's just a smudge right now. And in fact, I'm going to make a mark for this little light here on the filtrum. 
simple little light plane there. And let's subtract a little bit less around here and a little bit more over here. Notice how we're starting to create some volume here for where the mouth will eventually fit. So consider the structure that contains the mouth before you think about all the tiny little shapes within the mouth. All right, so this comes up a little bit more. Now that was perhaps a bit too much. So let's go put that back in there. And while we're doing that, let's also reevaluate these shapes, dark shapes for the hair. So again, with the stump, just creating these dark shapes for the hair. Nice and simple there. Now there's a little shadow here. So I'm gonna use the stump. A little shadow here being casted by the hair. I'm not gonna to get too caught up with that. All right, so let's put in a darker value there. And notice how we're observing the planes, even in the hair. And a plane is simply this. It's a large shape of value. That's all it is. Just a shape of value for our purposes. It goes in a little bit more. Now then, let's look at some smaller shapes here. So there's going to be a little bit of light right here for the bottom lip. And again, think about this structure of things. Don't worry too much about the details. The details will come almost automatically if you focus on the big picture. This comes in like that, goes inwards a little bit there. And this might even go there, who knows. But we're just blocking in our shapes. So again, let's go ahead and stump a little bit here. Again, just trying to infuse the charcoal into the paper. So subtract a little bit. I mean, we're, sorry, we're adding a little bit more dark here. Again, look how simple I'm treating these shapes. And again, I'm using straight lines and angles and I'm not too worried about something like that sticking out to me. Instead, I'm focusing on the shape. That comes in a little bit more. This goes down here. Now back to the chamois. Let's subtract a little bit more over here. I think that that shape actually needs to come out a bit. Not a problem. Back to the paper towel. See that? How I'm creating this plain change here using the paper towel versus the chamois. And uh, while we're on that, let's go ahead and just uh, smudge that in there a little bit. It's all about simplification and knowing what to put in to get the picture to read. In a very simplistic way. Very good for practice, especially if you want to move on to uh, creating oil paintings. This is really good practice. Let's go, let's go ahead and soften that a little bit. Again, we're just going to push this dark again. Let's go ahead and add that back. Nice and simple. All right, so now let's go ahead and Add a little more specificity to this shape here. So now with the stump, I'm going to go ahead and just move that shape down a little bit. All right. 
Now back to the charcoal. I'm going to have to sharpen the charcoal again soon. All right, so this shape comes up a little bit more, somewhat like that. Moving this down. All right, so let's go ahead and just keep adjusting the shapes now. Now it's going to be a matter of just tweaking the small things. So, okay, let's soften this little transition here. And charcoal is, I think, one of the most forgiving mediums to work with. It's a very forgiving medium. Subtract a little bit of light here for the tear duct. Now let's get even more specific with this. So with the stump, I'm going to go ahead and push this up a little bit more. Very simple. Now I have a little smaller piece of uh, charcoal that's sharpened to a very fine point. So I'm going to use this to draw in these very tiny little details. And by detail, I mean this little dark shape. Uh, this is probably the uh, bottom eyelid that's receiving less light, therefore it's getting a little bit darker. All right, so let's look at the little light here, a little light on the upper this top region of the eye socket. And let's just soften this edge while we're at it. Now back in with the chamois, I'm going to try and subtract even more over here. Applying more pressure, I'm going to subtract even more. Switching back to the paper towel, I'm going to go ahead and subtract a little bit more here by adding more pressure. So it's alright if it um, loses its shape a little bit like that. Because again, charcoal is very forgiving. Very forgiving. And by forgiving, I mean that it's easy to move something around. So I make a mark here. I don't like that it's there. I can just move it up. Keep moving the shape up. See how I can easily push it around? Sorry about the paper moving. Uh, but that's what I mean by forgiving. Some mediums are not as forgiving, uh, such as graphite. Now, don't get me wrong, I like using graphite. Uh, but graphite, uh, once you make a mark with a lot of pressure with graphite, it, it's going to stay there. But as a consequence, you can obtain an even higher degree of specificity uh, working with graphite. Not always, but in general that's the advantage that you get when you're working with graphite versus charcoal. Just adjusting that shape there. Notice how it's I'm making it a little darker as it goes across there uh, and that's because it's turning away from the light. Now this transition is even more subtle than I have it, meaning that this value is closer to this value than I have on my drawing. All right, so now we have this little shape it needs to come up a little bit. Just moving that shape up. Now let's add in a little tiny bit of uh, value right here for the tear duct. That goes down like that. Got to think about this space here now from this dark to this dark. Looks about right, but I got to make sure to stand back. Constantly double check my shapes. Now I'm going to subtract a little bit using the stump.
So basically I was just pulling like that with the stump. And now uh, there's a little more hair covering over here. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And again, dark shape here for the hair. Let's make sure to include that in there. This comes out to about there. I think I see a little more of the side of the face than I had. So let's go ahead with the stump again. Push that back in. And I'm also seeing a little less of the hair here. So we can even go back into this, this charcoal just to uh, mass in some more charcoal. Just mass in some more dark. This goes down there. Very nice and simple. Let's subtract even more light here. Wow, that's a lot of light that we can subtract. Let's try to keep these, uh, let's try to keep the valley range nice and compressed. Meaning let's not use too many values. Just enough to get the forms to read. Let's move that in a little bit like that. That cuts in there. All right, so now let's put this dark back in there. Now back to the nose. Notice how I'm gonna keep working back and forth, back and forth. The nose, it's a very subtle little transition of value here. The idea is to put just enough information. So let's subtract a little bit of light there. Switching back to the paper towel. Notice how very often I'm switching from my materials. I really recommend this kind of practice. It really loosens you up. It kind of trains your eye. It just trains your eye to see shape in a way that you perhaps couldn't see with oil paint, just because charcoal is so much faster. You can make these transitions so much faster with charcoal. All right, so that goes, that shape is actually a little bit larger than what I have. Could also be that this eye is too, sticking out too much move it in just a little bit more. These shapes are going to be really finicky, really tiny little changes. Just softening that transition. Let's go ahead and soften this as well. Can't quite put my finger on what it is with the mouth. Let's tell you what, let's just subtract a little bit of light here. Put in this dark shape here. This goes in like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stump this again. So I'm gonna stump it just to soften it at this point. And then I'm gonna go back in and reassess this boundary. So this comes out like that. Tell you what, this might even come further down. So stump, let's just use this stump. This is why I usually say, keep your shapes simple and easy to work with so that when the time comes, if the time comes to make any changes, just like I did, those changes will be simple and easy to manage. So I'm moving the mouth down a little bit more. I'm gonna flatten this shape out a little bit. That appears to come out like that. And the idea is to interpret the shapes. 
just look at the shapes, bounce your eye back and forth, and try not to copy what you're looking at. Try to interpret the information, the visual information in front of you. At least in my opinion, it's, it's not that much fun to go in there and copy exactly what you're looking at. I think it's a lot more fun to just go in there and throw in some shapes, simple straight lines and angles, and compare them to one another. And again, I'm sorry about the paper bouncing around. I'm trying to hold it straight. So we went in and reassessed this shape. And I think that's helping out a little bit. Let's go ahead and put this dark back in there. Very simple. And let's go ahead and give this a highlight again. Why not? Who knows? I may take that highlight out maybe four or five times after this. But again, this is all about just having fun with it. Practice. Practice often. Go ahead and subtract a little more light here. And you'll notice with portraiture and um, perhaps with other subjects as well, you kind of do a lot in the middle stages. It's a lot of stuff that occurs in the middle. I'd say a good 98% of the portrait is done in the middle stages. So, subtract a little more light here. And I'm not making any measurements. Now, you might ask me why. Why not just go and get a ruler and measure all of these shapes and get them as exacting as possible? And the reason is that I think I would just get really bored doing that to be perfectly honest with you. I think that it's just, I've gotten to a point where I want to create some kind of expressive effect with the portraiture, some type of expressive realism. So this cuts into there. Very simple and easy. Let's just soften that edge with the paper towel. Let's go ahead and make this shape come in a little more. Let's give her, let's give her a little shoulder line here. This comes down to about there. And while we're at it, let's subtract more light up here. Try to reinforce that plane change. So I'm going to use the paper towel. And I'll tell you what, I want to subtract a little more light than this, but not use the chamois. So what I have is a cleaner paper towel. So I have a paper towel that has been used less. And so I'm going to use it to subtract just a little more light. But not as much as the chamois. See that? Just little quick tips on how to handle your materials. Comes in like that. Now let's go back into the eyes. I'm going to sit back. Sitting back and squinting. I see that eyes might actually have to go up on their eye socket. So not a problem going back in with the paper towel. And at this point, you're like, what? You spent all that time? And um, hey, that's if that's what it takes. I just want to move the eyes a little bit higher up. Just a little bit higher up on that shape. And at the same time, shoot, let's go ahead and make this angle come up a little bit more. Play this game with yourself. How simple can you make the portrait at the same time exacting? 
Kind of a strange thing to think about. How can you be simple and exact at the same time? All right, so subtracting a little bit of light here. Just looking at the shape of that, of this tone. Now I'm going back in with the paper towel. And we're going to do the same over here. Subtract a little more light and go back in with the tear duct here. Let's raise that shape. So I just had to move the eyes up a little bit higher on the eye socket. It's a lot of fun to practice this way. And to sharpen your charcoal, just turn it. Angle it like this and just keep turning, 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 turning. Keep on turning. But then again, that would take forever with that longer piece. So I'm going to do that with the shorter piece. It's going to create a little wedge there. There's so many ways to sharpen charcoal. Some people think that there's only one way to do it. Um, and I think it's up to whatever your purpose is with the charcoal. And for me, I just wanted a little point. So let's go back in, draw that shape in there very carefully. And while we're at it, there's also a little shape here, the upper eyelid. Here we have the iris, a little shape for the iris there. And again, we're playing that game. How simple can we make it? How simple yet accurate can we make it? That's the game that we're playing. So that has to move up a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This I'm making a little horizontal motion here. And if I picture this little shape all the way to the right, it almost matches up with this dark shape, except this dark shape is a little taller. And again, making all these observations by eye. This is the story of seeing the simple shapes. So we subtracted a little bit with the paper towel. But of course, didn't want to subtract a lot. So that's why I used the dirtier paper towel. That is the paper towel that has a little more charcoal on it. Now switching back to the other charcoal, I'm going to go ahead and still try to get this dark shape. So there is a dark, or there is a plane here. Let's go ahead and put that plane. Light is facing that shape. So we got to add in that value transition. And let's look at the outside shape a little more. That comes out somewhere to about there. This actually comes down even further. Even further. Even further than I had it. That's okay. Look how easy it is to draw in these dark shapes. Super simple. Moving that dark shape down a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and reevaluate the orbicularis oris. So this bottom shape here is going to be the bottom plane for the orbicularis oris. So it's going to be darker, and that's because it's facing the light a little less. So if you notice, I'm kind of going to overdo it a little bit. So I'm putting in more dark than I need, and at the same time, I'm actually going to push uh, the lower lip up. Actually, maybe this whole shape up a tiny bit, tiny, tiny change. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more to the orbicularis oris right here, a little bit more charcoal, so I could come back in. See, not with the paper towel, but 
with this stump. So let's do that. Let's get the shadow, or sorry, let's get the shape here as it turns into the shadow. Notice how we're creating that half tone with the uh, stumping in of the charcoal. Just move that up a little bit. Now let's go back in with the paper towel. Just make that transition into that shape a little more smooth. Very simple. Now then, uh, I need a little more light. So let's use the chamois. See that? Now we have that top plane for the chin, top plane for the chin. Gonna just soften that transition with the paper towel. So now let's go back in for the mouth, the lower lip. So it's kind of tricky. The mouth is kind of tricky because um, it looks light because of the color, uh, because it's a red color, red-ish tone. But the value actually isn't that light. These values are actually darker than these values. So I have to take that into account. Let's go back in with the stump. Now back to the paper towel. Now I want it to be light, but I don't want it to be too light. So that's about the value that I want. So I'm going to go back in with the charcoal and just again reinforce this little shape. So I'm going to go ahead and reinforce the boundary between light and shadow. It comes in a little bit like that. And we have a little plane change right there. Notice how it goes yoop, zoop, like that, making little sound effects now. It's always fun. All right, so let's. Soften this transition here. All right, so I think that the shape is almost where I want it to be, this one. Maybe it's a little further out, maybe, not entirely sure. All right, so I'm gonna go and add in the highlights now. The little sparkles here for the lip. Don't want to get too carried away with them though. Just some simple little light. And there's also a little bit of light here. It'll also help to sharpen the edge between the upper lip and the top plane here. And then after I did that, I noticed that this shadow shape can still be a little more specific. So I think this comes in there like that and goes out like that. Trying to get even more specificity. After standing back, that's still a little questionable, that shape, but it's okay. I'm practicing. This comes out like that. It's a little better. And let's go ahead and look at this boundary now because I lost it earlier and I still I kind of want to unify that shape but uh, let's just go ahead and restate that value so again back with the stump very subtle little transition of value there almost non-existent basically non-existent really Goes in a little bit more like that. All right, let's just add a few more little shapes for the hair. And uh, I think that this will be about a finished little sketch. 
Alright, so let's just move this whole shape down now. And I'm actually going to just soften this line. Kind of don't want it there, so there's a little swoop, swooping motion that the hair is making in this direction. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And again, I'm sorry that the paper is moving around. Just thought I'd show you all how I practice portraits. Sometimes I'll do many of these uh, in one day. Spending maybe 30 minutes, 30 minutes up to two hours on one of them. I wouldn't say any more than two hours on one of these. Alright, so let's go ahead, put that shape back in there. I'm gonna go in here with the paper towel, just kind of get these little edges to be soft. Kind of almost makes the texture look like hair. Let's let this come out a little bit. Let's do the same kind of thing down here. Just let this go down, just like that. Just cover the whole thing. And then again, back with the paper towel. Let's just get some light so that it looks like the light's hitting the hair. Just get a few little curls here just for fun. Pull that into here. S sit back. You know what? I think I want this shadow, a little bit of this shadow here. Let's just put that in there. Just a little glimpse of the shadow. Just using the paper towel. Just kind of adding a little bit of a little bit of variance into the background. Let's just soften the shape here. I want these shapes to be pretty sharp in here and then softer down there. Let's go ahead and reinforce that sweater. A little shape there for the sweater. I'm actually going to make it curve a little bit. I don't want it to be too flat. So let's just make up a little curve here. And make these little shapes. Very nice and simple there. Let's cut these dark shapes back in. Soften this edge a little bit more. Gonna sit back, see if I need to do anything else to it. I think we're approaching the uh, conclusion of this, this little practice sketch. Oh, not yet. I see a little edge here that needs to be softened. So it's a little sharper here, but it needs to be a little softer out here. Just softening that that edge. And let's go ahead and sh soften this one too. Let this be sharp. And then this one be softer. Very simple. And I think that's about it for this, this little uh, charcoal study. Let's just go ahead and add a little more charcoal here. In any case, I, I think that's gonna be it for this um, quick little charcoal study. I just wanted to show you I just wanted to show you all how I go about practicing portrait. And again, I don't like to get too attached to these. I like to uh, just go in there with the charcoal and work with large masses using all of my tools. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a very hands-on uh, approach to drawing. So I hope that this video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.